Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back in War Thunder looking at another hidden vehicle, and this is the first of the two hidden Sparvieros, but we need to clarify something before we uh, go ahead. So, if you didn't know, let's say you only started War Thunder in maybe the last year or so, you may not know that uh, the Italians, or the Italian planes, some of them, used to be in the German tree. Now, these were in the form of the CR-42, the G-50s, the C-200s, the C-202 Fulgori, and then also all of the Sparvieros. Now, once the Italians were added to the game, all of these were actually uh, made hidden. So technically, all of these aircraft that you see here, plus all of these are hidden aircraft. But, before this happened, in update 1.37, the SM-79 Sparviero Series 4, 1937, the one you see here, and then the SM-79 Sparviero BIS-N 1942, they were removed. So for me, these two are much more hidden than all of the rest. And if you want to see any of these, well, they're already in the Italian tree. Uh, they're just sat here in, uh, you know, two slots. So... If you want to get access to any of those machines, you can in the actual game. So I am only going to be looking at the Siri 4 and the BIS slash N that we see here. So let's get started. This is the uh, Siri 4. It is a rank 2 battle rating 2.7 Spar Sparviero. So it is the you know second highest. You go from the 1.7 and then you have two sevens and three O's. So with that said, the armor profile on it doesn't exist. Uh, this is a very, very weak aircraft. Once it gets hit, it gets hit hard. And that's mainly because it's made out of engines and not a lot of uh, space. So generally, if somebody hits this aircraft, you're going to either hit a gunner or you're going to hit an engine. What is this thing powered by? Well, it's powered by three Alfa Romeo 126 RC 39, uh, sorry, 34 nine cylinder radials. Has three of them, as you can see in this configuration. It has two pilots, uh, a, a gunner back here, and then we have two gunners over here who do waste guns, as you can see, and the bottom uh, gun here, which is also operated by them. One thing I do want to point out uh, on the X-ray model that you may not have seen is, unfortunately, lad on the top gun, uh, his legs have gone a bit wonky. Uh, <laughs> you can see probably from here, one of his legs is a is a, it's it's not in the greatest position. And uh, hopefully, hopefully he gets that fixed. You can see he's got a bit of a wide berth. He's definitely got some of those berth and hips going on. But yeah, also you have the oil cooling systems uh, right here and here. And then the fuel tanks. So this thing is made out of fuel tanks, oil cooling systems, and engines. It's very, very easy to knock these engines out. Uh, they have no armor. They have nothing. Uh, most times what will happen is one engine will die if you get hit, and if you're lucky, only a pilot will die or something like that. But when it comes to guns, it has a forward-firing 12.7mm that you can see here. has 350 rounds to it. It is a Breda Safat, so it's pretty good. Then you have the top gun of another 12.7mm. Then you have two waist gunners with 7.7mm Lewis machine guns, of all things. And then a 127 Breda Safat looking below. Now, the coverage of guns for uh, this machine is actually not too bad. Uh, the only real blind spot when it comes to looking behind is straight behind the tail. And also, uh, if you are uh, like at an angle above here... Uh, none of the gunners can actually shoot you. So those are the two blind spots. If you want to actually just take this thing out, uh, just come from the front or below. So basically attack it from underneath and just batter it here. Or just from that blind spot. So you want to approach it from like around this angle and just move it in. When we look at the modifications of this machine, once again, because it's not a premium, you do actually have to modify the whole thing. The bomb loads that you get, uh, the first one that you get is really weak, so actually getting to that second stage can be kind of annoying. 1250 kilos, uh, not something you really want to write home about, but then you double it to 12100s, and then you go up to 5250s, and then two 500s. Now, the reason I like to take five 250s is, as you can see, each one has an explosive mass of 125 kilos, which is the important number here. So we're talking about, what, 250, uh, then 500, 
and then 625 kilos. Now, if we compare that to this, which is 216, you're only getting 432 kilos of uh, explosive mass. So overall, the 5250s is better for versatility because you have more bombs, so you can pick and choose where you want to drop them on. On top of this, it's better for base bombing. You can knock out a whole base with the 5250s, so therefore take them instead of the 500s. Overall, the only time I'd say to take the 500s as if you're running this in some kind of ground realistic scenario and you're trying to get in there and doing some damage to uh, some larger tanks. Talking about running it uh, with ground realistic, one of the issues that you're going to run into it is the 2.7 lineup isn't that strong unless you really enjoy the Puma. So at 2.7 you have the Marder 3 which uh, is just not a very good vehicle, has a really good gun on it, it's a gun platform, but apart from that, you know, you're really struggling for stuff. The Mada 3H is a hell of a lot better. But the Puma with the 50mm is an incredibly fun vehicle to use. So if you're using this as a top tier vehicle and you're trying to look for a bomber to throw in there, yes, so you can throw in an SM79. Uh, if we look at the other options though, such as HE111H6, yes, you're losing a bit of versatility because you don't have the front 12.7 but you are gaining a Fritz X, or you're gaining a much, much larger bomb load. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's one of those, why would I take this when I can take this? And uh, it's the same in realistic, unfortunately, too. You also have the option of taking some JU-87s if you feel like it, and then uh, also some other stuff like the BF-109 F1, which I'd probably take over it. Overall, if I'm looking to uh, go into... A, uh, a ground realistic scenario and I want to take two aircraft I take the JU-88 C6 because it has bombs and it's not too bad at fighting and then I also take the HU-111 just so I can donk on fools with the thousand kilo overall unfortunately this thing doesn't really have a place in that lineup but as a third or a tertiary vehicle when it comes to the air I think there is at least an argument to be held there anyway let's get into some gameplay the SM79s will always hold a special place in my heart, because as a person who started the British and the German trees exclusively when I begun the game, they were the first few bombers that I actually played, and to be honest, I really enjoyed them. Uh, you basically had uh, the Heinkels, and then you had the SM-79s. And the SM-79s, because there was a lot of them, yes, uh, it felt a lot like, you know, you're playing the same vehicle over and over again, but at that time, I played Arcade. So, as a person who really enjoys bombers, you know, the history of especially British bombing is something that really piques my interest when I look into World War II stuff. Uh, the fact that I could have five of these in my lineup uh, was insane and perfect uh, for what I wanted to do, which was just to play bombers. Now, as time has gone on, Obviously, there have been other vehicles added to the game, such as, you know, the BV-238, the uh, other JU-88s, and even uh, some updates to the Heinkels, the HE-111s, which dwarf uh, the SM-79s, especially the Series 4. When you compare the H6 HE-111 with the SM-79, it is terrible. Uh, the only thing that the Spaviero has is maybe a little bit more maneuverability and, you know, flexibility in how it flies, but everything else is stronger on the Heinkel. I suppose you do have the 12.7mm, uh, which is able to offensively shoot forward, but it, it really is a dire situation for the machine. Like, as a bomber, in air realistic, in ground realistic, uh, the the jobs definitely change. So in air realistic, you're looking more for something which has a large bomb load, which you can try and get to the target, especially at lower levels where people don't generally climb to you. And this means that stuff like HE-111s are generally better than Spavieros. When it comes to ground realistic, where you have to worry a bit more about AA, you have to worry a bit more about enemy fighters in a confined area, then the Spaviero can be more useful. But the question is, do you want the trade-off? Do you want the trade-off of losing a thousand kilo bombs to 500s, 
or even 250s. So if you are more of a skilled player, if you are somebody who uh, much prefers, you know, much better precision bombing at lower altitudes, the Spaviero is probably a better bet than the HE-111. But in any other situation, the HE-111 unfortunately is the option. There is also a few uh, interesting things about the Spaviero. With the fact that it has no armor on it, what you find is it's incredibly fragile uh, when it gets shot. When it hasn't been shot, it is quite maneuverable. It isn't that fast, uh, even though it has three engines. The engines themselves aren't that powerful, and the plane itself is quite heavy. But you can chuck it around. You know, It's got a big elevator, it's got big rudders. Uh, you can throw it about the sky and have a bit of fun with it. Uh, it does tend to drift uh, horizontally, which which is kind of an interesting thing to it. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, it's it's uh, pretty maneuverable. But once you get hit, once one of those engines either turns yellow or you have oil leaking or fuel leaking and one of the engines dies because they die incredibly quickly after they've been hit, this thing struggles on two engines. The Siri 4 does not have war emergency power, so the 100% is what you're stuck with. Now, it won't overheat itself, it will just potter along, but once you are down to two engines, you're pretty much screwed. You have two real problems with the Spaviero. If the central engine is taken out, then the machine just wants to nosedive constantly and you have to try and keep it up in the air uh, for as long as you can. Feel it how it goes from a plane which can actually keep itself up in the air and climb to more of a glider scenario where you're trying to just keep altitude and get it on the airfield. If either your left or your right engine is taken out, you start drifting across the sky. And this is a real issue for a pilot because that means you can't go in a straight line, so you can't try and get to the airfield as quick as possible. So this thing really needs those three engines to stay in the air, uh, which is a definite issue. The cockpit is nice though, even though it is a placeholder, and uh, the gunner is, uh, well, we've already seen his, uh, his legs, he looks kind of hilarious. But overall, yeah, the, this thing doesn't really have a place. Uh, we, we already have all the other Spavieros, we already have, you know, the, the Heinkels, it, it is definitely... Uh, a machine which has become a part of the history of War Thunder but will probably never come to the forefront again just because it got power creeped out of all existence. And there's a lot of vehicles like this in the game. The B-17s are very similar to this. Uh, you know, old BRs for old machines. The B-24s are like this as well. And unfortunately, the German and the Italian Spavieros are very, very similar. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.